is going on, gents? It's RPM here, reporting from Mobile Command with another Ada post. Been a while since I've done some of these, and shout out to the big man Lex Luthor for dropping these in the comment section. Told you, brother, I got you. Now, this one was posted 14 hours ago. And here's the question that's put to the public. Am I the asshole for telling my former stepson the real reason I didn't see him much after the divorce? I was married to my ex-wife for nine years. I came into my stepson's life when he was four and my ex-wife and I divorced when he was 13. It's been seven years since the divorce. I've since remarried and have two kids with my current wife. I raised my stepson. I'll be calling him JT as my own and I loved being his father. We were very close and I wanted to adopt him but was constantly blocked by his bio dad who's a real P.O.S. Well, he got with a woman with a child. Gentlemen, women like that are for recreational use only. Yes, as you guys know, I got with a divorced woman with two kids. Yes, I raised them well. We have a very good relationship. But their biological father, they have the right to go back to Japan and be with him if they so choose. That's one thing I've never done. I've never told them, you can't. You're both adults now. You can do what you want. But yeah, in general, don't do that. The divorce between me and my ex-wife was messy. We married too young and looking back, she was a toxic and negative force in my life. I also didn't know it then, but she is also bipolar, which was undiagnosed and untreated when we were together. And it explains a lot of the behavior I witnessed. Oh, the irony. So many women are out here running around with undiagnosed and untreated mental illness which goes back to the old phrase which i think is a stupid phrase now that you think about it getting with a woman means you have to find the one that's the least crazy hmm. yeah once again gentlemen don't waste your time trying to fix a broken woman you'll break yourself in the process and then she'll blame you for breaking yourself go figure I wanted to stay in JT's life since I basically helped raise him, but my ex refused to let me see him and threatened to tell him I'd been a cheater and abuser if I pursued any legal routes for visitation. Oh boy, isn't this the standard trope? I'm going to use the child as a weapon. Now, this guy had every single right to completely wash his hands of the situation. At the time, I was newly laid off and unable to find a good lawyer. I really regret not fighting harder, calling her bluff, but I was afraid she'd turn him against me or even lie to the police and get me arrested for something I didn't do. Classic classic. JT and I reconnected last year. He's 20 now and living on his own and in college for engineering at that. We've been playing catch up and he's met my wife and one of my daughters. I've given him some things for his apartment, etc. He eventually asked me why I didn't stick around after his mom and I split. I told him pretty point blank. Your mom made sure I couldn't. I didn't go into details with the threats 
or why we split in the first place. But I let him know she had strong armed me into being no contact. Oh, that right there. Parental alienation to a T. JT was understandably furious. Obviously, I didn't expect his mom to have told him the truth, but I didn't realize how in the dark he'd been. And yes, that happens all the time. I got a call from my ex. I have the same number as I always have had. With her cussing me out for slandering her to her son and talking to him in general. This is the first time I've heard from her in five years, by the way. She apparently hadn't known JT reached out to me. I told her to never contact me again and that her son is a grown man and can do as he wishes. I've deleted her number and talked to JT, who confirmed that he confronted his mom and they fought. He's clearly really upset that she lied to him for so long and feels really betrayed by her. Wow, how many times does that scenario play out where the kids finally find out just how fucked up their mother truly is and they turn on her? I feel terrible and I'm wondering if maybe honesty or full honesty wasn't the best policy in this situation. I don't want to cause rifts in a family, even if it's my ex. She and I have a bad history, but I know she loves her son. Well, he is not the asshole in this situation. He kept it real enough, but this situation plays out every day. Parental alienation. The kid only gets one side of the story and then later on in life, he reconnects with the father or father figure and gets his side of the story. And then guess what? That kid gets thoroughly pissed off at the mom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yes, for all you women out there with children, there will come a day where you are confronted by your child as to why you kept the father out of his life. Yeah. Now, going back to my own history, of course, I grew up with a non-married mother. I found out that I was in fact a side piece baby. Now, of course, my father being a military man himself, we actually sat down and I got his side of the story and we hashed everything out before he passed on. And eventually me and my mother sat down and we hashed everything out, you know, before I came back out here to California. So neither one of my parents have any regret from me. I've forgiven both of them that way when when my father passed on, he went peacefully for me. And when my mother eventually passes on, she'll have peace for me also. It is what it is. But speaking of keeping things real and moving on, I was going to talk about this election. Man, I tell you, I'm constantly getting asked, well, did you vote? Uh, no. Well, why not? Now, you would think if somebody asks you, did you vote and you say no, that would be the end of it. See, this is why I fucking hate liberals. I do. I despise liberals. They just can't let it go. Well, why didn't you vote? Um, because it's my right to not vote. So then here's how I throw them for a loop. Whenever they ask me, well, which candidate would you pick if you did vote? I said, well, let's see. On the Democrat side, I got creepy, sleepy Joe Biden with his um, crime bill 
and the VAWA Act, I would never vote for him. Then I have Donald Trump and the Republicans, who, in my opinion, have become completely uh, toothless and fangless and pretty much spineless. So I wouldn't vote for them either. So here's who I would vote for. The candidate who starts to address men's and father's rights. That's who I'd vote for. And every time I say that, I get a blank look from the other person. Mm-hmm. See, that's how I keep it real about this whole voting thing. I don't care either way. Neither candidate has said anything about men's and father's rights, so I don't care about either one of them. But yeah, that's how I feel about the election and voting. But yeah, that's just me keeping it real in so far as this topic. But going back, yeah, this guy's definitely not an asshole. He said what needed to be said and he let the cards fall where they fell. So now the son and the mother are definitely at odds. Yeah, ladies. This is what you get when you turn your kids into weapons. Those weapons eventually get pointed back at you. Well, read the Reddit post. Let me know what you guys think. And ladies, the power is still metaphorically out. <laughs> Feminism and your ability to practice parental alienation from good fathers is going to eventually go out right along with it. And you will have that ultimate confrontation from your children when they find out the truth. That's all I got to say for this one. RPM, I am